of America, to all who shall see these presents greeting, this is to certify that Lieutenant Colonel Troy Dennis Orwin, having served faithfully and honorably, was retired from the United States Air Force on the first day of September 2013, signed General Mark A. Welsh III, Chief of Staff. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant Colonel Irwin will now receive a certificate of appreciation from the President of the United States, which reads as follows. Certificate of Appreciation for Service in the Armed Forces of the United States of America, Lieutenant Colonel Troy Dennis Orwin, USAF. I extend to you my personal thanks and the sincere appreciation of a grateful nation for your contribution of honorable service to our country. You have helped maintain the security of the nation during a critical time in its history with a devotion to duty and a spirit of sacrifice in keeping with the proud traditions of military service. Your commitment and dedication have been an inspiration for those who will follow in your footsteps and for all Americans who join me today in saluting you for a job extremely well done. My best wishes to you for happiness and success in the future. Signed, Barack Obama, Commander-in-Chief. having over 50 people in this room with 53 sitting down the rest standing up is less of a fire hazard than having chairs to provide for everybody. <laughs> so I do apologize for not having chairs. For those of you, I also know that it is approaching 3 o'clock and Congress and the White House always throws a preemptive round across our bow at about 3.15 on a Friday right before a holiday. So I know some of you will, be, will have to get up and leave and actually do some work as those individuals hit the send on their, on their uh, computers, shut it down and go home. Um, if that's the case, I am having a reception. Uh, I'm not having a reception here because the Pentagon Nazis take all the fun away from us, so I'm leaving. Um, I do apologize that it's not here and I do apologize that it's not more uh, convenient, but as if anything in this city, Nothing is convenient and nothing's easy, so why should my retirement festivities be any different? <laughs> it is at Fort Belvoir. I think we have maps in the back, five to eight, plenty of time from when I shut up, when you can drive down there and, um, and partake of my food. And thank you very much, uh, one, for bringing me on, uh, two, for your uh, mentorship, your leadership, and at times your education. Uh, us fighter pilots don't tend to like to learn things from politicians from appointed people or from people outside the break of things and killing them. <laughs> no. Trust me, she looks like a very nice, terrible oh, no. man. She, she's she's a bulldog. When she gets <laughs> She'll make any fighter pilot proud when she pins her ears back. <laughs> and I enjoyed very much working for you, and I enjoyed very much you taking the time uh, to, to, to make, uh, come to this festivity. Uh, and to be a part of it. And I have really enjoyed working for you for the last two and a half, almost three years. And thank you. Uh, I want to thank General Wheeler. Um, <laughs> first time I met General Wheeler, I went to his office. And I've never, even in my three, over three years at the weapons school, when you're shoving six hours into a 50 hour brief, I have never heard a man speak quicker than this man. <laughs> I had to stop him and say, sir, there's only two fighter pilots, there's only one fighter pilot in this room and one wit guy, and I think that's me. You cannot talk faster than me. <laughs> and then, whew. Peg and Dave, I see you, Hobo, Harry, uh, family, uh, made the trip uh, from Iowa and made the trip from the Eastern Seaboard. I appreciate you taking the time and spending the money to come out and uh, sharing the festivities. Uh, I really do appreciate that. Um, other thank yous, 24 years in the, in the Air Force, uh, 19 years flying fighters, 
uh, two years jumping out of airplanes uh, with the Army. I don't know if that was the smartest thing I ever did, um, but it was interesting to say the least. And then almost three years up here pushing paper. Um, I didn't get where I was at uh, by myself. Uh, I have to thank my commanders. Uh, everything I learned in leadership, I learned from them. Uh, the Low Millers, the uh, Disbros, the Slats, the Trappers, the Big Owls, the Cajuns, the Mikeys, the Mad Hatters, the OBDs, the JJs, the Brises, the Dudes, the Dudes, two, I have two Dudes, uh, Dudes uh, for that, the Thomases, all those guys that took the time to provide me an example of good leadership, uh, mentorship, uh, arm around the shoulder when I needed it, and a swift kick in the ass when I needed it. Uh, and uh, I appreciate the patience that they had with a young aviator uh, who thought maybe a little too much of himself every once in a while and, and had to be brought back down. Uh, as my grandma said, don't think too highly of yourself. Uh, somebody's gonna, gonna, gonna give you a rude awakening. Luckily it was them and not somebody on the other side that would have been a real rude awakening. Uh, thanks to my instructors. Uh, one of the proudest things I've ever been in the 24 years as an instructor. I love being an instructor. Uh, the greatest honor a commander can give to you is that instructor realm. He's putting on you the trust and faith in your ability to take the young pups and teach them how to do the job. So when we go down range, you can get the job done and you can come home alive. Flight mates, Peter, <laughs> thank you for coming up. Uh, even though you did fly the little airplane, <laughs> oh. bigger, blacker airplane. Um, but I do, I do. My flight mates, Hobo, thanks for coming up. All the guys I've flown with, uh, I learned so much from them. Uh, we, we had a lot of fun flying. We scared ourselves a couple times. <laughs> but we always had fun and we always learned from it. And uh, we were always honest with each other about our performance. And we could be critical on each other, but when we stepped out of the brief room, we'd also go to the bar and have a beer and uh, live and fight another day, which is always fun. Thank you to my students. I won't name all of them. Uh, well, most of them are outrank me now, which is a good indication that maybe it's time to get out. Um, but I learned more about being an instructor from my students than I ever did from anybody else. Uh, the old cliche, if you want to learn, if you really want to get a good in a subject, teach it. Um, I was lucky enough to teach the top uh, aviators the Air Force put forward. And trust me, those smart dudes would ask you questions that came out of left wheel, which forced you to answer them, and if you didn't know, to go learn. Uh, and I, I became a much better instructor by instructing. I thank my students for making me a better instructor, a better leader, and a better warrior. The uh, core values of the Air Force, integrity first, service for self, and excellence all you do, that was instilled in me at a young age. It is still my mother and father. I thank you for instilling those values in me, holding me honest, and holding my feet to the fire. Uh, they really had one, two rules, I believe, when I was a kid. One, you're going to make grades, or you won't have a life. I believe those were the words. Listening class. <laughs> and two, try everything. Don't quit. Um, so that's what I did, and it, it did me well. And thank you. Thank you for your support over the years. Thank you for uh, watching out over Monica and Colette in the many times I've been, been boy, I'm very proud of my parents, uh, and I thank you very much for all you've done for me and my family uh, with that. Thanks for the rest of the family for supporting us. It's not easy. Um, it's easy for us to deploy. I think anybody's deployed. Uh, the easy part is going downrange. Um, harder part is coming home, believe it or not, but the easy part is go downrange. Uh, we go downrange, and uh, because of the family, and knowing that we don't have to worry about if the wife's going to leave us, if the house is going to be there when we get home, if our kids are going to be there when we're home, uh, we know the home's going to be there. So all we have to do is con the bills are going to be paid, things are going to get fixed, and we're going to come home and there's going to be something. Um, so we can concentrate on what we were sent down range to do. Uh, and the support that the rest of the family gave Monica and when Colette, during my last deployment as commander downrange, uh, which was a whole different perspective on getting shot at, um, uh, really means a lot uh, for that. Uh, that, that, that and I thank you for that. Um, sir, I know you, had a busy, you have a busy time. Uh, we have never met. By the way, I'm Bucket. I'm not Troy. I'm Bucket. <laughs> thank you for your kind words, and thank you for taking time to be a part of this. I'm not sure why I stayed married for 23 years, but I'm pretty doggone sure it's because I was gone most of them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why.
and I'm even more amazed when I got home and she was still there. Um, I don't know if I would have been, especially after the 10th, 11th, 12th, 14th, 16th, 20th time I was gone. Um, but I appreciate you. I never worried about you. I never worried about the house, the dog, the kid, or anything, which allowed me to do my job. Um, and it allowed me to go do what I had to do and then come home. And I appreciate it. And I love you very much. I love you just as much as I did. I do it anyway. The yellow represents um, the home front for me. Uh, holding down the home front, being the support structure when I was gone to, to Monica and Colette. So thank you, Mom. I appreciate it. Thank you for everything you've done. For every year you've been an Air Force brat, <laughs> six pink roses for you, little one. Aww. Twelve roses representing the 24 years, six red, six white. Six red for my love for you, and six white for your honor to your country and uh, the purity and what you brought as a spouse in defending our country. Amen. My wife had a great scene. I, I volunteer for this. Uh, I wanted to be a fighter pilot more than I could think of everything I ever wanted to be. Um, and I just got lucky that I got the opportunity to do it. Um, but she was drafted, and she'll ask that. Yeah, Troy, Troy joined up, I was drafted. And I think any spouse will, will kind of agree to that. They don't know what they're signed up for. When we, when we got on the airplane at JFK for our first operational assignment at Lake Mead, we had no idea in the four years I'd be there that I would be deployed into combat, two of them. Um, she got a great time in England. I got to see Italy at night um, at 34,000 feet. But um, uh, but nobody nobody says anything. You know the families just don't stay together. Um, things just don't get done. Um, people don't come home okay from these long deployments. Um, somebody's got to help men. Somebody's got to help reintegrate guys and gals back into it. It's usually the spouses, and nobody says thank you. Um, now, I know the Obamas have done quite a bit, and I've, I heard Mrs. Obama try to bring a lot more attention to the spouses, which they deserve. Um, they don't get any medals. I got a whole wall full of plaques and medals uh, for all the great things I supposedly did, but the spouses don't get that. So, for every spouse here, one, I thank you for your service, because you did serve the country, and unfortunately, the country, I don't think, really understands that, and an Air Force that should, should do a little bit more to thank you throughout the process as opposed to then. But my, my attempt to, to remedy that is to give my daughter, who is six years brat, <laughs> your medal for six years of serving your country. It's a small token, but thank you. My wife calls it um, pilot PMS. Because if I don't fly, <laughs> you're right. I have to fly. But I'll miss the flying. I'll miss the... I'll miss the I've never had an, anything in my life that's challenged me physically and mentally and even emotionally at times than flying a high performance. I'm going to miss the guys flying. I really, uh, from the fighter squadrons uh, to even uh, even the ALOs, I'd love being an ALO. I thought being an ALO and working with the Army was, was outstanding. Get an opportunity to go stand up a squadron, uh, get an opportunity to work with another service. I'm not so sure jumping out of a C-130 or a C-17 at night with 5,000 of your closest friends is such a good idea, but I did enjoy doing it. Um, uh, again, getting shot at is not so much fun, but that's part of the job. But I, I will miss the guys that I went to war with, the guys who do it, I miss it. I'll miss the Friday nights in the bar. Um, I learned more in the bar about the J-O-B than I ever did anyplace else. For those of you that are in leadership positions, if you don't get your guys out, uh, one of the guys I really had the most respect for was General Jumper. He made a point of coming to the weapons school in Nellis at least once a year when he was chief of staff of the Air Force. He made a point of being in the bar on a Friday night to let the guys roll in on him and, um, and, and state their mind. Addendum. When you roll on the chief of, staff, chief of staff of the Air Force and put your finger in his chest and say, that's no what the hell is going on and this is how he needs to fix it, you're ready one Monday morning. The boss saying, okay, why is ass? <laughs> Fix it. Yeah. <laughs> would like that paper by the end of the week. Congratulations. <laughs> Be careful what you ask for, especially after a couple of whiskeys. <laughs> but I do appreciate it. <laughs>